Keith, what other transfusion complications do we need to worry about? Transfusion complications can be broken down into systemic complications and those that are component specific. The systemic ones include transfusion transmitted infection, allergic reaction, febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction, transfusion related immunomodulation, and alloimmunization. Natalie, what do we need to know specifically about transfusion transmitted infection? While historically transmission of viruses such as hepatitis and HIV were the most common, testing has essentially eliminated this risk. Bacterial contamination of blood products is the most common now. There are somewhere between 0.2 to 7.4 events of transfusion transmitted infection per million units of blood products, with platelets most commonly being implicated at 1 to 2 to 3,000 units. Contamination is less common with apheresis obtained units. The most common pathogen is a staph species from skin contamination. CMV transmission is still a risk as 50% of donors are seropositive. Transfusion transmitted infection prevention involves following transfusion guidelines, using blood within four hours, and leukocyte reduction practices during component isolation. Howard, now our patient has developed hives and lip swelling. What should we worry about with allergic reactions? Allergic responses are typically IgE mediated and consist of hives with a small risk of anaphylaxis. Allergic reactions are generally donor specific, which is another reason why it's best to use blood from the same donor as much as possible. Washing packed red cells free from any remaining plasma can reduce the risk of allergic reaction. And treatment for allergic reaction to blood transfusions is antihistamines with steroids for severe cases and possible intubation if the airway is threatened. Okay. Keith, you get a call from a nurse that your patient is 20 minutes into a transfusion and now has a fever. What should we worry about? Febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reactions are the most common type of reaction with about 1% of transfusions resulting in benign fever. The likely cause is leukocyte and cytokine contamination of blood units. Incidence of these reactions is reduced by leukocyte filtration or reduction and early use of blood products. There is no long-term morbidity of this type of reaction but patients who experience it are at increased risk for future similar reactions. Remember, this is a diagnosis of exclusion. One must rule out more serious causes of post-transfusion or post-operative fever before attributing the fever to this. If our patient has now developed a nosocomial infection after her transfusion, Howard, do you think this could be related? It certainly could. Transfusion-related immunomodulation, or TRIM, is not completely understood, but certainly can alter a patient's immune system function during the course of an ICU admission. It's thought of as a two-hit hypothesis where the patient's immune system is already occupied with an immune response to critical illness, and then a transfusion distracts the immune system and dulls the immune response. TRIM has been associated with nosocomial infections, the recurrence or spread of cancer, and interestingly, improved renal allograft survival. Natalie, are there any complications that are typically associated with specific blood components? The most common component-specific complications are hemolytic transfusion reactions, both acute and delayed, related to packed red blood cell transfusion, and trolley and taco related to plasma transfusion. The most common cause of hemolytic transfusion reactions are unfortunately human error with cross-matching. Acute hemolytic transfusion reaction related to ABO incompatibility is related to IgM and complement activation. Cell lysis releases free hemoglobin, which damages tissues leading to ATN and renal failure. The presentation of acute hemolytic transfusion reaction is fever, hypotension, renal failure, dark urine, and often DIC. Management includes stopping the transfusion, fluid resuscitation, and diuresis to flush the kidney. Delayed reactions are due to development of allo antibodies against minor blood groups and usually represent two to 10 days after transfusion. IgG and C3B opsonization activates erythrophagocytosis leading to abnormally shaped RBCs which lyse and release unconjugated bilirubin. The presentation of delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction is anemia and jaundice. Management is just supportive care with possible additional transfusions for anemia. So it's clear with all of this discussion of complications that there's so much we need to consider when giving transfusions to our patients. Howard, what is the risk of transfusion complications compared to other causes of morbidity and mortality for children? Well, <clears throat> this chart puts the risk in some perspective. The risk of contracting a virus or suffering a fatal hemolytic reaction is about the same as being killed in an airplane crash or by lightning. 
Life-threatening reactions are on the same level of frequency as firearm homicide, at about one in 100,000. Trolley is slightly more common, about the same chance as being killed in a motor vehicle collision. And finally, taco and non-hemolytic fever are quite common with about 1% of patients experiencing these. The bottom line is, if a patient needs a transfusion, it should be given. The benefits of blood product administration likely outweigh the risks, but do be thoughtful and limit unnecessary transfusions to reduce patient complications in general.